I'm going to share my uh, slides with you. So I am starting my screen share here. I hope my uh, voice is uh, clear to you all and you can hear me. My voice is audible. So here I go. Please give me a second so that I can manage my um, slides here. I need to actually manage that how I can share my slide share here. It's very first time I'm using this uh, YouTube uh, broadcast and uh, and all uh, on my own. So just give me a moment. Once we are in the flow, I hope that uh, it will be better. Okay. Okay, so I hope that uh, you all can listen to me. 
and uh, especially i request my students if they can hear me very clearly please either message me or uh, text me on my whatsapp so that i can just uh, continue with it right so let's start with the first uh, point feasibility analysis class i know that we have already um uh, covered so many uh, extensive topics on starting a business venture but uh, meeting you all after these three months i guess a quick quick uh, overview of uh, the basic thing that why we study entrepreneurship is very essential so uh, the first thing entrepreneurship journey as we all know starts with a problem identify the problem there are issues in the society. There are issues in the marketplace. So if you just gauge them, if you can measure them, if you can identify what problems are there in the society, then only you can come up with a solution. So entrepreneurship is just not your interest. Entrepreneurship is also about your issue solving. How do you solve issues? How do you actually cover up the issues pertaining in the society? So before I begin the proper feasibility analysis chapter, I say I'll start with an example. There was a lady who started a famous board game, Morphology. It was started back then in 2002. The product was not launched, but the idea actually generated in 2002, the year. It took around eight years for the lady to bring that idea into reality. She found a gap in the market. She thought that while going to the parties and everywhere, people get bored actually. And when they get bored, they, might, they just want to find some party games. And here comes what type of party games might there be. Morphology was the solution. So she actually perceived an idea that how new interesting games could be uh, created. And then she realized this idea until a full product launch could be made. It is a story of venture and how feasibility analysis were taking place in this entrepreneurship journey. We see that, okay, why this feasibility analysis is very important. Sometimes or usually we see that entrepreneurs skip this feasibility analysis part. They do not, do not uh, have a... Um, uh, more emphasis on uh, feasibility analysis rather than they fix on they fix on uh, starting a business plan directly but that is a wrong approach you actually have to come up with a feasibility analysis to know the practicability of or the viability of the business is the idea which you have generated really useful Will it really work or it is just mere an idea, not workable? So the usefulness of a business is actually measured or assessed through the feasibility analysis. It is very important because if an appropriate time to feasibility study is not given, it brings some very harsh consequences to the business and sometimes or in fact always result in mostly results in a failure so one thing we have to understand that feasibility analysis is very important feasibility simply students just remember feasible word it actually is the state or degree of being something being something easily done or if you can do something conveniently that is feasibility it is actually the practicability you can say or the practicality practice practicality of an action or an idea which needs to be assessed you have an idea 
but is it practical thing or not but that is the feasibility analysis it is the workable work ableness you can say so it says that let's suppose you have an idea you just think about mountaineering you think about uh, trekking the uh, towards the k2 base camp but before doing that just an idea and you just want to go with your friends you actually have to prepare yourself you actually have to see if you're going for a mountaineering or trekking how uh, how uh, high will you go do you have the complete gear and uh, the stuff so that you can go and climb the mountains so altogether feasibility is that way it is so important we actually know that there are many risks related to resources it could be the capital risk the capital investment the physical inputs or exertion all associated with a venture or a startup so don't you think that it is it should be advisable to have a feasible analysis before delving into any business activity so this is how it is important and i have already discussed with you that many entrepreneurs make a usual mistake that they do not um consider this as a very important point or important task in the process and they straight away make the business plan if you are jumping directly to making a business plan believe me it is hazardous and it um, as because you are omitting one of the important step of successful venturing right so we have to check if the idea which we are making is commercially viable importance of feasibility somehow we have actually uh, studied about it we are knowing about it that why it is so important because it if it is not uh, conducted so business actually ends up usually in failure or much distraction it takes a longer period of time to for business to sustain and uh, create uh, its uh, proper establishment in the market so we all know that uh, the process of business startup we see that testing of idea is actually a crucial step it helps a person to assess if the idea in their mind is just not an idea you actually visualize your business idea through feasibility analysis you, you actually visualize what Okay, it's just not an idea, but it is a business setup, a business setup, a business opportunity. Visualizing that is important, and feasibility analysis actually provided provides you with that um, visualization. We see that there is a there is a vast difference between business idea, a uh, business plan, and feasibility analysis. we see that feasibility study is actually a critique which evaluates the quality of the proposed business idea and then it justifies it if it is workable whereas if you see the business plan on the other hand uh it is actually more inclined towards the planning of the business structure and its processes business kaise hoga business plan batata hai once it is launched who will do what work from where will the resources come and how it will go on for some time whereas business feasibility tells you that the market the market which you are actually diving into is it really really uh, beneficial is it really that deep that you can dive into it or is it uh, hazardous it's dangerous so that is the feasible difference between feasibility plan and the business plan we actually have to acknowledge and realize beforehand that all enterprises think that their idea is wondrous i know all students when i just ask them to make their business plans and think about the idea who oh, come on they come up with so beautiful ideas and they all think that their ideas are going to make wonders they are going to be they are viable but believe me that most of the ideas more than 50% of the ideas which is observed in the market they are actually not viable and uh, they actually seem to be very flashy and uh, they seem to be very positive 
um, but you we actually have to understand there are some core risks which are associated with the venture startup and if you just overlook those risks you end up with no end up nowhere so you actually have to understand this importance of feasibility analysis so just to think about we can uh, say about an example if airbnb is introduced also it is already introduced here a similar similar service if it is introduced here in pakistan you actually have to think about the market would it be beneficial for us to start this airbnb sort of business here a venture are the is the tourism market that uh, mature are the people ready to comprehend it understand it and then accept it so these are the questions and to answer these questions you have to make a market research through a feasibility feasibility plan so again we say that if the zameen.com let's suppose an example uh, was started it really would have uh, made up a feasibility plan to see if they have a, a room to enter in the market are, are people really were people at that time when it started really um, ready to purchase uh, real estate through an online system if we see that in today's time with everything is becoming online just due to this ongoing pandemic we see that there are more emerging markets which actually pursue us or push us towards online business systems so again we can assess the market its depth through feasibility analysis and see that if the market is um has proper practical grounds where we can continue with our business moving ahead when the feasibility analysis should be conducted the timing the timing should be there is it a proper time are new emerging markets popping up are they being created if they are so the timing should be there the correct timing so whenever you are starting up a business you cannot uh, you cannot overlook or um, let's say neglect the timing the proper time when the business should be started you cannot neglect it then again from idea to resource generation you should conduct this feasibility analysis before putting any expenses before putting any resources into the system before spending anything you have an idea in mind do the feasibility analysis you know there is a gap in the market do the feasibility analysis before spending anything spending anything is again as we discussed the resources not only the physical capital technological but also your time that is very precious so you always have to remember that resources are important and before spending any resource on a business you need to conduct a proper feasibility analysis let me say that there are some uh, components of feasibility analysis actually the uh, methodology of conducting feasibility analysis is very extensive yet believe me it is uh, worth conducting if you conduct the feasibility analysis it's very important it's essential the analysis actually cover full or the the the, the four key areas we say total four, four key areas they are divided into four components which are the product feasibility or the service if you are offering industry or target market feasibility organizational feasibility and financial feasibility so in the end of this session i'll be telling you about the i'll be telling you about the assignment of feasibility analysis and that is uh, the first screen the first screen tool which will be shared with you through the google classroom and you have to come up with that feasibility analysis of your business the ideas which you have already generated we know that feasibility analysis require primary and secondary research 
will speak about it. And I hope that my students very well know that the primary research uh, data collection requires an investigation in which a person or the investigator, the researcher, actually uh, involves himself, takes the data uh, as a first-hand investigator by himself from the industry experts, from by taking uh, surveys, interviews, and uh, they can ask feedback from the prospective customers, they can conduct focus groups, and so on. So that is the primary research. Going yourself to the customers, going to see yourself to the industry um, experts, and then taking the idea from them is your primary research. And I, I think that it makes sense that you go, to the, you go to the experts, you go to the potential customers and ask them about your business idea. They can give you a better picture if your idea could be viable. Then, then comes uh, your secondary research. It is actually the research which you find in the published places, the research which is already conducted, published somewhere. So anyone already has collected some data in the industry? You can find the reports, you can find different magazines, you can find the published data anywhere, and that is your secondary source of data. So this is how we actually will conduct our feasible study, feasibility study. First of all, we'll go and we'll see that, okay, here, four components are written and it's a flow chart made, that if you have a proposed business venture, you see that there are different feasibility plans, product or service feasibility plan, industry, or organizational and financial feasibility plans. If you see that all four areas are met, if all four feasibility plan give you a green signal, only then proceed with the business plan. If any of these feasibility uh, components does not uh, meet with the requirement and give you a red flag, please do not proceed with the idea, but rather just revoke it, re revisit it, and you can again think about it. What changes or alterations can I make to my existing business idea? I'll start with, uh, okay, the first one is product or service uh, feasibility. The product and for service feasibility simply is uh, the overall appeal of the product or service which you are launching. It is just to, to assess the product being proposed. What type of product are you proposing? What type of service are you proposing? Assess it. What will you assess? You will assess that, is there really a need of that product? Do people desire it? Is there any space in the market? Acceptability by the market? And again, if there is a demand already uh, persistent about that product. We all know that demand itself, the definition of demand in economics or in business is divided into two parts. Demand always persists when there is a desirability, there is a need, and then there is an affordability as well. Demand cannot persist without these two components. It doesn't make a demand. And if someone has money but doesn't need that product, that again doesn't make a demand. We all know that very clearly. So we first see that if the product, the market is ready for our product by assessing two different things or two different components, that is the demand and the desirability. If you speak about the desirability, desire, your need, your requirement, is the product you are going to offer really needed by the customer or are the services required in the marketplace? Just question yourself. You can note down these questions so that you can answer yourself that do we really need these answers? Uh, do, do we really need these things? The product should be launched or not? So you ask some questions which I'm telling you. The first one is, is the product or the service which you are offering, uh, will it excite the customers? Is it attractive, attractive, uh, attractive towards them? Do you think that they will be finding it attractive? 
So it is very important. Let's say if I'm going to start in an online career counseling business, would it attract you as a customer? Is it an exciting business for you? Then comes a very um, trending business these days is let's say the carbon printing, the carbon footprints, because people are more, more um, inclined towards organic things and there are more environmental concerns, uh, incl uh, inclinations by the masses. So we see that uh, if we start any such business which helps the environment, would that help? I'm just thinking about it. I, I say that it's a global inclination that everyone wants to go towards environmental sustainability. But again, this is what I think. What I think might not be a feasible idea. Maybe this doesn't work here in Pakistan. So again, starting such a business of environmental sustainability might not work here. You have to work on it. You have to research on it and find its feasibility or viability. The second question, does the business you start or you're launching with, does it solve any problem or does it fill any gap in the marketplace? Let's say there is a problem. People are not kind enough. They are not kind enough to the elderly. People are engaged in child labor in our society. Maybe you come up with a very different idea to combat this societal issue. If that is so, it means that it is actually filling up a gap. Maybe, but again, there are so many uh, elderly houses, old age houses there. What different thing you will, produce, you will come up with? Or maybe you have something very different idea for them. Maybe the elderly, maybe the children or anyone, the orphanage, or orphan, orphans. So you have to think about it. And then you have to also think about the desirability. The third question, is it really a good time to introduce the product in the market. I'm just going to start up uh, an amusement park services during this pandemic time. I know it won't work. It won't work because people are not inclined towards going outside. They want entertainment at home. I'm starting online business now, e-commerce or any such thing. That's the correct time. Yes, people want to buy things by staying home. Isn't that so? I hope it makes sense. Then the fourth question, are there any flaws in your product or design? Yes, so maybe there are flaws. Again, when you will ask these questions, you will again revisit your business model. This is how I have to launch my product or service. Once you ask these questions, you will revisit them. Then you see the flaws. You will make alterations. Okay, no, this is not required by the customers. But if uh, the same product, I just modify it in this particular way, then it might create that desirability. You revisit and then you answer these questions. One of the important tool of uh, answering this question, I'm coming here with the desirability part, is a concept statement, the concept test, you can say. We conduct a concept test, your idea test. Concept is the idea, the conception, the abstraction. Now, the concept, uh, concept test, you say that it is a one-page description of a business, okay? It is simply a, uh, a primary test to check if the concept of your product, of your service, is really viable. How it works, it actually, you have to make a statement, the concept statement. I'll show you the concept, I'll share that concept statement with you in your Google Classroom, students. And there you can see that uh, it, 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 it actually includes the description of the product which you are launching, the features, kya hai? So, a proper sketch bhi bana sakte hai. Okay, this is the product of my of my launch. This is the service which I want to launch. Mujhe ek resort start karna hai tour, tourism ke liye. Ya mujhe simply koi bhi, let's say I'm starting a, a um, restaurant. A restaurant, yeah. 
a home based business maybe home made cooking business so all these things these are simple businesses we say home based businesses so you actually have come up with the product description what you are making you are making different dishes maybe continental dishes maybe pakistani dishes whatever it is and how it will this, this business will work you can just put up some sketches as well the descriptions with the logo and the brand name and these such things then you think about the target market you just write down that target market so who will buy your food and are there any specific age or demographics related to your customer who's going to buy that food maybe you are just going to send that food to office goers the people who are doing uh, who, who are unable to have homemade food from their of to in their offices if that is the case again it could be anyone that means that again you know about your target market you have to write that simply that this is my target market these people are going to buy my food maybe i'm going to supply that food to the uh, to a canteen in any school so many things right then comes another uh, other other part in the concept statement that is the benefits of the product okay so what are the benefits my product or let's say the food which i am going to offer is uh, hygienic it's extremely hygienic and one of the best benefits of the food is that i can provide with uh, home deliveries with cash on deliveries and uh, you can any time order the food and the food will be delivered to your place within 30 minutes the freshly cooked food if that is the thing the benefit people any time they are busy in their offices working in the meetings and suddenly just they crave for food they just call you up and you will send them within 30 minutes the freshly homemade food so it could be the benefit which you are adding to your product or let's say if you are uh, sharing that food or sending distributing it in a canteen in a school so again that will be a very hygienic product made by someone staying at home and caring for the children that is the benefit and of course the children or the parents will be enticed towards it then comes uh, you actually also have to add up the positioning relative to the competitors because it's not only you who have who have started the homemade food business it there might be several other people and they all are your competitors your rivals because they are taking the market share so what you can do you have to tell about the usps the unique selling propositions or let's say the uniqueness the special features of your food maybe you are the first movers to provide with very organic food you are the first mover who are actually making food with uh, these international standards or with environmental concerns your packaging is very different it could be anything again different something unique so these things and i guess one more thing you have to add is your management team who who is actually managing the whole team the managing uh, the business you have to write brief about it that is your um the owner of the business about his qualification and about his experience how long has been he or she into the business do what type of experience do you have in cooking food do people really like it if you have any past experiences or credentials write that down that actually builds up the credibility of your business so i will revise again we are dealing with this that is product or service desirability right in product and service desirability we have a tool that is concept statement you will make concept statement this concept statement is just one page long this concept statement has five different headings the first is description of the product second is what is your target market the third is the benefits of your product the fourth is where how do you position your product with uh, relative to your competitors and the fifth one is the managerial or management team 
who is involved in the business you have to write about them just visualize ek page pe aapne ye panchon cheeze likhi aur unka brief description likh diya theek hai aap kya karenge ye concept test kya hoga aapne apne business ke bare mein pura likh diya and now you take this concept statement to anyone let's say an expert in the industry ya kisi bhi customer ke paas leke jaye aur usko bole please aap isko padhiye and tell me that if this business is viable kya aapko lagta hai ki agar mera ye business hai main food bechta hu ya bechti hu aur main ye introduce karna chahta hu ye bilkul nayi cheez hai is tarah ki packaging mein hai aur ye in logon ko cater karegi to kya aapko lagta hai ki aap ye cheez khareedenge you give them a survey small survey questionnaire too with that attached to it ask them the questions that do you think that this idea is good the product is good or not can you just highlight some weaknesses kahan pe koi masla hai to main usko sahi karu rectify karu do you think that uh, any there is any room for improvement let's say or uh, if you can suggest me any any idea how i can revisit this idea so aap agar teen sirf questions likh ke piche se ek paper attach kar de is concept statement ke sath jaiye market mein at least 10 to 15 people they could be the industry experts किसी स्टोर वाले बंदे से भी पूछ सकते हैं और यू कैन आस्क सिंपली अ कस्टमर टेन पीपल फिफ्टीन पीपल आर टच एंड आस्क सच क्वेश्चंस दैट इज वेयर यू विल गेट एन आइडिया दैट इफ द प्रोडक्ट इज रियली डिजायर्ड इन द मार्केट राइट सो दिस इज हाउ वी मेक दैट कॉन्सेप्ट स्टेटमेंट माय स्टूडेंट्स माय बी बी एस यू एल ऑन्टरप्रेन्योरशिप क्लास you actually have to prepare that concept statement this week only right and then the coming week we will conduct that concept test and you will be again um communicated about all this information through google classroom but i'm just giving you an idea then coming back we see that product service feasibility analysis also involves product service demand demand assessing the demand is very important you know the desirability is there you have done the concept test now comes the affordability part are people really going to afford it do they have that buying intention because usually when you go to these surveys people say yes the product looks very good it it's very optimistic uh, you get very really optimistic results of uh, this uh, concept test but it's better to have some concrete evidence and what you can do you can come up with a product service demand analysis do we have it here yes the product service demand analysis conduct is conducted through primary and secondary research what do you do you have to administer a buying intention survey or you can go for a focus group or a gumshoe research right the second part of this demand analysis conduct a library internet research or use the local data perfect so i'll come up with the first part i hope you are understanding it i'll give a really a very quick recap so that we can just streamline things maine start kiya yahan se main apne product ki feasibility uh, feasibility analysis karne hai right aur uske liye the business analysis uske liye hamare paas char components hai product and service industry organization or financial first of all hum kar rahe hain sirf touch kar rahe hain product or service feasibility ko product service feasibility ke liye we have again two different parts pehla part desirability tha jisme we have conducted a concept test the second part is product service demand analysis demand analysis ke liye we have buying intentions survey theek hai so now we are here at buying intentions survey now i'm telling you that how it works usually Uh, we discussed in the class as well that these are the sort of prototyping the business 
आपने अपना बिजनेस का कोई एक मॉडल एक डेमो बनाया सर्विस है तो डेमो बनाया प्रोडक्ट है तो उसका आपने एक प्रोटोटाइप और फंक्शनल मॉडल बनाया और वो आप अपने कस्टमर्स पोटेंशियल कस्टमर्स के पास लेके गए इट कुड बी लेट से आपने फूड बिजनेस स्टार्ट किया है मेक समथिंग समथिंग यूनिक यू हैव मेड अप यूनिक डिश इट्स स्वीट इट इज अ वेरी स्पेशलाइज मिठाई टेक इट टू डिफरेंट कस्टमर्स आस्क दम टू टेस्ट दैट see what is their the, their reaction and if they really have an intention to buy that product you have to ask them of course so buying intention survey number 1 uh it is actually a survey which uh, let's say it acts as an instrument to measure the customer's interest in your product This again, buying intention survey consists of a brief descript description of the product or the concept statement which you have already made, and uh, again, you you come up with a short survey to direct to direct customers, the potential customers. How you can conduct it? It's simple. Usually, people because it's time consuming and it is resource consuming as well. people usually use the survey monkey tool for it i hope you all know about it so go for the survey monkey tool which is free accessible free as well or survey gizmo as well there's another tool so you can make your small survey and uh, if you're conducting it online as a service business or you can just uh, take out a, a hard copy of the survey and go and visit your uh potential customers showing them that prototype of the business getting them getting it tested and then taking their feedback that if the product is uh, good enough and they really have intentions to buy although the survey usually of course is not a scientific research and of course it does not follow the scientific research protocols of let's say the random sampling but actually it generally provides with a sense of degree about customer intentions about of the offered product wo bata dete hain andaaza ho jata hai ki if the product is really good ya hum log khud hi aise we are just thinking very high about it so it it's more realistic so you simply ask the questions like if they they have a they have a purchase intention to buy that product kya aap ye cheez lenge दूसरा सवाल आप उनसे ये पूछ सकते हैं कि अगर ये इस कीमत पे मिलता है या लाइट से आप इस ये कितनी कीमत पे लेंगे अगर आप uh, आपको ये सेल किया जाए तो दे कैन टेल यू एन आइडिया और यू कैन गिव देम ब्रैकेट अ प्राइस ब्रैकेट ऑफ डिफरेंट ऑप्शंस कि अगर आपको ये किस इस कीमत पे मिले तो आप कौन सी कीमत चूज करेंगे एंड देन अगेन यू कैन आज दैम कि आप ये कहाँ पर लेना चाहेंगे मे बी यू कैन स्टार्ट अप योर ओन योर ओन आउटलेट or you want people to get that stuff let's say maybe home delivered or they want it in a in a big shopping mall or maybe a convenience store anywhere so this is how actually you'll get about the idea ki mujhe business kahan pe start karna chahiye kya mujhe apni ek dukaan leni chahiye ya main kisi aur dukaan pe let's say koi bhi super store aagaz or um it could be india store or anywhere wahan pe main place kar dun kya log wahan pe lenge kya aap apne customer se direct poochte hain so this is how it works then uh, comes your um after this buying intention survey we know about this focus group the interviews like my like let's say some expert expertise or let's say some uh, customers are gathered together and you question them about your product and uh, this is how it a focus group is conduct a research type later on we see about the gum shoe research gum shoe research i know that it is a very new term for you so that's why i just want to but make you understand this the word gum shoe tells that what does it mean the word itself gum shoe it is a shoe it is actually it comes it's it's uh, let's say the base the origin comes from a definition of the shoe which has a rubber sole rubber sole attached to it right so when the shoe has a rubber sole it doesn't make noise 
Gumshoe is a person who is a private detective. So we use this term as an informal term terminology for detectives, right? So what do you do? You Gumshoe research. How do you do? You will become a product for your product. You will become a detective. What do you do? You will have to do that. You actually have to go to the market. Quite steps. You will not hear the sound. You will not know the sound. But you are actually doing a research. Where will you research? Go to the market where you are selling similar products. If you have started a food business, then there will be a food business market. There will be restaurants, there will be food streets. Go to the food streets. And observe that what people are coming in, what people are going out. What do they purchase actually? What time do they purchase a product? You actually have to make a unique product. So, you will research your product. You will see what are the intentions of people's intentions. What are their demands? How many people are serving? How many people are ready? You also can interact with people. Just not showing them that you are going to start up a business, but asking them about their intentions, knowing about their purchasing power. and their interest in a particular product. Let's say you are offering toys, and different unique educational toys in, the business, in a new market. So again, you see that you can go to toy stores. Not only there you see the customers, but you also just observe that where do these uh, potential customers also go other than the toy stores? They are actually in the Montessori's. They are actually in the daycares. Visit there, observe them. How do they consume the product? This is how the gumshoe research is actually conducted. You actually have to understand with this uh, product feasibility, product or service uh, demand or product or service feasibility, that uh, you cannot rely on your gut feeling or the instinct. मेरा बिजनेस तो अच्छा है बहुत अच्छा आइडिया है क्योंकि ये पहले कभी भी किसी ने इंट्रोड्यूस नहीं किया एक्चुअली देर इज अट ऑफ होमवर्क एंड रिसर्च टू बी कंडक्टेड बिफोर लॉन्चिंग योर प्रोडक्ट द कर्सरी इंफॉर्मेशन द कर्सरी इंफॉर्मेशन एक्चुअली इज नॉट इनफ इट विल नॉट हेल्प यू टू डिग डीप इन टू योर अंडरस्टैंडिंग अबाउट द प्रोडक्ट डिमांड Before diving into it, you always have to remember that you have to come up with extensive research. बहुत ज़्यादा पापर डेली हैं. You have to find out the real market before turning that idea into reality. But again, remember, students, one thing that there are always time constraints to it. So remember that the time constraints must be there, and you cannot. Um, Let's say um, avoid them. Also, we see that there is another step too. That is conduct library or internet research or the local data. It means that okay, fine. You have asked the customers. You have uh, you have a survey with you. Survey batata hai okay. Our business start kar le. लेकिन एक बहुत अच्छा तरीका है concrete evidence लेने का. And that is and that is your library. अवेलेबल रिसर्च इसका मतलब है कि आप देखें इंडस्ट्री की रिपोर्ट्स फिर से देखें कि फूड बिजनेस कैसे काम कर रहा है इज इट रियली मेकिंग सेंस इज इट रियली मेकिंग प्रॉफिट आर कस्टमर्स रियली गोइंग इन देयर डिफरेंट जर्नल्स ट्रेड मैगजीन्स और इंडस्ट्री रिपोर्ट्स आपको ये सारी इंफॉर्मेशन देंगे यू एक्चुअली हैव टू प्रूव विद अ सॉलिड रीजनिंग That your product or service is feasible. So that again, वो concrete evidences कहाँ से आएंगे? आपको find करने हैं reports and documentaries. Also again for this whole process, the demand process, आप survey कर रहे हैं. Other than these, uh, these two, we see that there are other options. You can ask people questions on different social media platforms. It could be Instagram, creating polls. You can ask questions on Quora as well, and people will answer you. It's a very trending thing these days. 
and again you can uh, market that same product and ask about uh, ask questions from your personal blogs on youtube as we are communicating through the channel today so different different things you can use survey monkey and uh, get uh, feedback on your ideas from other sites like concept share or quirky many other options so you have to find those options and do your product or service feasibility plan now comes the second part industry or target market feasibility plan again this industry target market industry plan is has two different components this plan is actually a uh, assesses the overall attractiveness or the overall appeal of the product in the industry kitna appeal kar raha hai logon ko industry ko having a quick revision you know that industry is actually a group of firms who are working on uh, or who are working or doing business uh, about the same products right it it could be a shoe industry a textile industry so computer industry or paper industry what it is different firms of different products but the industry is one that is a particular industry of any one domain now this is industry whereas the target market on the other hand it is the uh, portion or you can say a faction of industry that uh, that consists of someone who you want to cater to it is actually a specific group of people let's say um you want to reach with your marketing message target market aapko kaha ek industry puri industry hai theek hai usme bahut sare firms kaam kar rahe hain target market kya hai it is the customers the potential customers aap aisa nahi ho sakta that when you are starting a small business you are going to cater the whole industry you cannot do that it's not feasible again coming with a coming up with a viable plan you have to find a small faction mujhe kaun se demographics ko kaun se customers ko attract karna hai and i have to cater to them so potential customers who are likely to buy your product is the target market and we have to remember that these people these customers have some common characteristics then comes uh, i can give you a few examples let's say you are let's say opening a online education facility or a particular particular subject let's say software engineering now you're going to start that online education who will you target that market to do you think that a specific demographic customer is going to buy that is attracted towards that will an elderly person like it will a housewife like that product will she buy it for you buy it from you of course not so there is a specific market that the young people who are tech savvy and who want to learn about the artificial intelligence and technology resort opening up a resort we think about it who is going to be my target customer maybe let's say i'm providing luxury and comfort who is going to buy it maybe couples maybe elderly who want to find some peace maybe there are college students but again you have to think that how much are you charging for it if it is luxury will college students coming for college trips buy your product maybe not again that is the thing you have to analyze the feasibility analyze that to whom that product is attractive to So here we go industry attractiveness first part 
here we are okay the industry attractiveness let's say you see that there are different industry different firms and uh, even different industries in the market of different products and they have their own level of attractiveness how do you see that industry is attractive you see first of all the emerging industries new industries the times which we are crossing to in these these times are very ambiguous we do not know that what's happening all around due to this um, all lockdown and pandemic the covid uh, persistence so we see that uh, it's better to find out the emerging markets emerging industries new industries jo emerge ho rahi hain theek hai second thing is that always see the industry attractiveness kaun si industry attractive hai jo ki young hai ek to emerging hai aur young hai bahut purani industry nahi hai wo aap agar dekhe cola market mein do hi aapke competitors hain major competitors coca cola and pepsi and entering, entering in such an old market you will find so many hindrances because the market entrance somehow is very very difficult and again the industry is not attracted towards your product it's an established industry so young industries have more space for incumbents to come in and make a space there while addressing or assessing industry attractiveness we always assess it through the Porter's five forces model. Five forces. What were the forces? If you just recall, it could be the threat of new entrants, right? So, is that that industry has a a room for new entrants? Can new entrants come any time in this industry? It's easy to come inside. The industry barriers are less. That means that. Of course, you can start the business there. Less barriers; it's more feasible, but more easier for you to enter the market. But always remember, if there is le, uh, there are threats of new entrants, it means that you will find more comp competition, a cutting edge competition. Then again, you are entering into market. You assess the industry and the attractiveness. and you see that okay i offer a product and there is again already a threat of substitute product maine jaise hi product banaya koi aur bhi usko replicate karke substitute product bana dega if that is so it means that industry is not very really attractive then you have to see the bargaining power of the buyers if it is low it means that industry is attractive आप एक ऐसा प्रोडक्ट बेच रहे हैं जहां पे बायर आपकी कीमत पे प्रोडक्ट लेगा इट मींस अ गुड इंडस्ट्री देन यू यू मूव अहेड एंड आई थिंक फोर्थ वन वाज द बार्गेनिंग पावर ऑफ ऑफ कोर्स द सप्लायर्स रॉ मटेरियल जिससे ले रहे हैं अगर सिर्फ कम सप्लायर है उस मार्केट में तो अगेन लेट्स सी यू आर स्टार्टिंग एन ऑनलाइन बिजनेस अ सॉफ्टवेयर बिजनेस यू आर गोइंग टू फाइंड सम टेक सेवी पर्सन एज योर एम्प्लॉइज लेकिन वो पर्टिकुलर जो स्पेसिफिक स्किल है वो बहुत कम लोगों के पास है तो अगेन दैट मेक्स अ ट्रबल फॉर यू बिकॉज दे चार्ज यू वेरी हाई सो सप्लायर पावर इज आल्सो इम्पोर्टेंट टू लुक इन टू सो इंडस्ट्री बिकम्स अन अट्रैक्टिव व्हेन सप्लायर्स हैव मोर बार्गेनिंग पावर एंड द लास्टली लास्ट वन पोटर्स फाइव मॉडल इट से द इंटेंसिटी ऑफ कॉम्पिटिशन इफ द इंटेंसिटी ऑफ कॉम्पिटिशन इज लो industry is attractive you have more space to show your product and attract more customers right so these are the things other than that you can see the barriers to entry shouldn't be there much there aap aaram se at least start kar sake cost kam ho product start karne ke liye aapko assess karna hota hai environmental trends are they in favor or against the industry aajkal jo halat hain क्या वो मेरे जिस इंडस्ट्री में मैं जा रहा हूँ वो फ्यूरेबल है या नहीं है यू हैव टू असेस दैट एंड अगेन द पॉलिटिकल एंड सोशल ट्रेंड्स और ये भी देखना होता है कि क्या वो इंडस्ट्री आगे बढ़ रही है 
is it embracing uh, innovation innovation is it uh, is the innovation accelerating ya phir wo die kar rahi hai vein kar rahi hai khatam ho rahi hai innovation is mein nahi hai koi room hi nahi hai aage badhne ka agar aisi cheez hai to uska matlab hai ki aapki industry jo hai wo zyada durable nahi hai it will not last long to aapko industry attractiveness ke liye kya karna padega again check karna padega through the industry reports the secondary research hai and uh, from where you can find data on industries in pakistan simply go to fbr uh, pakistan bureau of statistics and there you will find industry reports about everything manufacturing services and so on so forth then i'm coming to target market attractiveness you know that target market is a um, narrow group of people of course who have same uh, interests and uh, you find that narrow group of people in a larger market theek hai these people have same needs to aap unki dekhenge ki in logo ko similar needs hain to aise logo ko aapne cater karna shuru kiya that is your target market remember that when you are doing an industry or target market analysis we see that uh, introducing a new idea in a very new market aap bade bade optimistic hai ki naya idea hai aur naya naya market mein bilkul emerge karunga that is not feasible that is being very very too optimistic and that will end up in some troubles it's better that you come up with let's say a new idea but in an existing market or let's say you can come up with a new market but in a new product now how it works let's say existing market hai ek aur aapne ek product naya leke aaye duniya mein taxis to hamesha chalti thi right people wanted to commute through taxis and rickshaws public transport now that was an existing market so uber and kareem and swv came up with a new product to 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 cater a different set of people different set of target market a new product it could be an uh, an evolution to the existing product or existing market people were there those who wanted to commute bus is ne bahut sare log pehle bhi jaate the lekin ab aapne unko ek naya product provide kiya ek nayi service provide ki then comes new product a uh, new market in an existing product now again existing product to bahut sare hain let's say we have online courses coursera edx they are providing online courses aapne find kiya kya main isme ek nayi market add kar sakta hu aur kar sakti hu how it could be ye coursera and edx wagaira kisko cater kar raha hai students ko kar raha hai agar to kya ye teachers ko resources de raha hai maybe yes maybe not you have to research or let's say are they targeting towards young aspirants young students only is artificial intelligence being taught to elderly kya hum log aage jis age pe ja rahe hain are we going to forget our senior citizens we shouldn't right to uske liye aapne kya kiya product to tha lekin aapne ek nayi market nayi target market ko wo product offer kiya same as with let's say there are so many schools behaviorist uh, behavioristic uh, approach rakhte hain jo aur jo ki aapko etiquettes or soft skills sikhate hain right aur ye kaun ye kisko target karte hain usually very young children right lekin humne dekha ki hamari market mein hamari society mein people have less tolerance and also they have uh, they do not have that basic etiquette uh, awareness or study learning provide them with this opportunity see maybe that is your new target market so these are just my ideas maybe it it, it it they won't work we have to conduct feasibility analysis of course these are just raw ideas so again you know that um, mobile phones are for let's say everyone of course but there could be any particular mobile phone for especially for young kids it could be any mobile phone specially for an, for elderly 
because elderly today most of them are living in old houses living alone they are vulnerable you can provide a mobile phone which is very much uh, let's say accessible to the elderly but easy use ho usme elderly ke hisab se ho usme har cheez unko aksar aapne dekha hoga ki elderly people do not have their thumb impressions they are also faded away तो आप ये जो आपके आईफोन्स हैं या नए मोबाइल फोन जो टच स्क्रीन और थम इम्प्रेशन पे चलते हैं एल्डरली के लिए हम क्या सोल्यूशन निकाल सकते हैं मार्केट है मोबाइल फोन की लेकिन आप उसमें एक नया बिल्कुल प्रोडक्ट है बट आपको एक नया मार्केट टारगेट मार्केट उसमें एंटर कर रहे हैं मॉडिफाई द एग्जिस्टिंग प्रोडक्ट एंड क्रिएट न्यू टारगेट मार्केट यस तो यू कैन अगैन कंडक्ट दिस फिजिबिलिटी एनालिस यू कैन जस्ट थिंक अबाउट इट सो uh so that your product could be launched properly now you always see that there is a challenge remember that aapko mujhe ye yaad rakhna padega it is a challenge to identify the target market bahut bada challenge hai because you want to find a market that is large enough for conducting for generating business revenue aapko ek achhi khasi badi market chahiye taki aap apna business start up kare aur kama sake but on the other hand that market should be small enough to avoid the rivalry with the big shots and the market giants badi itni ho ke paise aa sake lekin itni choti bhi ho ki aap manage kar sake aisa na ho ki aap bade competitor ki nazron mein aa jaye isn't that so i hope it makes sense you understand so it how this is how it works so we have to come up with industry analysis and see the and carve out a specialized target or niche of the market and there are several examples in our society let's say uh, the bread we always usually eat don bread or some specific bread uh, brands but there have been some emerging brands which started with home built businesses let's say bread selection slice of life and i personally know these entrepreneurs they started with home based home based businesses and how they have expanded so they actually found the industry they thought that okay this industry is there is although there were dominant players already there but this industry is uh, attractive then comes again uh, you know about one of the example i even gave you before that was h2o idea h2o idea is was about was for understanding a new market those divers terne wale they actually wanted to use their iphones and ipads under the water so they come up with a solution that was iphone ipad waterproof housing that product just giving giving them a complete uh, cover so how you actually can find that niche how did they find that niche they actually have to research on market kya jo log dive karte hain swim karte hain kya wo waqai mein chahte hain ke wo apna phones pani ke uh, andar use kare kya water sports ki sales itni ho rahi hai they actually have to research that second thing what they have to research first that not only about uh, iphone and ipads kya wo log not only about that they are uh, swimming or into the water sports but also if they are buying iphone and ipad so within the stream they have to find two different things one thing are the swimmers buying iphone and ipads on the other thing do they really want to use those iphones and ipads in the swimming uh, uh, during the swimming or during going under the water and again one more, more important thing that are the iphone users usually buying or interested in this diving stuff so is the diving stuff going up or it is also declining so ye sab cheezon ko measure karna is actually the industry analysis accounts organizational feasibility analysis i'll just wind up very quickly now because i think time's running up so within this organizational feasibility analysis we see that we actually assess our own organizational um um resources 
दैट आर वी रियली केपेबल ऑफ रनिंग अ बिजनेस आप फीजिबिलिटी एनालिसिस कर रहे हैं अपने आप को देख रहे हैं कि क्या मेरी मैनेजमेंट इतनी एक्सपर्टीज और uh, इतनी केपेबल है कि दे कैन रन द बिजनेस द टू पॉइंट्स इन एट मैनेजमेंट प्रोविस एंड रिसोर्स सफिशेंसी management prowess simply means that uh, if the management has prowess the skill theek hai capability is the prowess so the courage or skill you can say yeah so management uh, uh, prowess is simply to evaluate the skill set or the ability of the management team it actually requires your integrity jab aap management prowess check kar rahe hain तो आपको बहुत ऑनेस्ट होना पड़ता है यूजुअली हमारे एंटरप्राइजेस जो आपके वेंचर्स हैं वो सोल प्रोप्राइटरशिप होते हैं आप अकेले उसको स्टार्ट कर रहे होते हैं और आप समझते हैं कि मुझे तो हर चीज की एक्सपीरियंस है लेकिन जब आप ये ऑर्गेनाइजेशनल फिजिबिलिटी कंडक्ट करें तो बहुत ज्यादा सच्चे ऑनेस्ट होके और बहुत ज्यादा स्ट्रेट फॉरवर्ड होके इसको कंडक्ट करें एंड थिंक दैट वट वट मैनेजमेंट एक्सपर्टीज यू रियली हैव और अगर आपके पास नहीं है वो एक्सपर्टीज तो क्या वो मैनेजमेंट एक्सपर्टीज आप कहीं से हासिल कर सकते हैं कहाँ से कर सकते हैं मे बी योर फ्रेंड्स आर देयर टू हेल्प यू आउट दे हैव दैट एक्सपीरियंस एक्सपर्टीज सो ऑल टुगेदर क्या आपको चाहिए आपको चेक करना है प्रोफेशनलिज्म आप देख सकते हैं कि एक मैनेजर में होना चाहिए इंटेग्रिटी उसमें होना चाहिए डिवोशन उसमें होना चाहिए एक्सपर्टीज उसमें होना चाहिए एक्सपीरियंस एक बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट चीज है नेटवर्किंग एक अच्छा मैनेजर या एक अच्छा ऑन्टरप्रेन्य वो है हु हैज गुड सोशल और प्रोफेशनल नेटवर्क देन अगेन डू यू हैव एक्सेस टू सम एडवाइजर्स लीगल एडवाइजर्स और बिजनेस एडवाइजर्स ये सब चीजों का अगर कॉम्बिनेशन है एंड यू थिंक दैट यू हैव वेरी गुड हाईली केपेबल पीपल और नेगोशिएटर्स विथ यू इट मीन्स आर इट विल एक्चुअली एड अप टू योर बिजनेस क्रेडिबिलिटी बिजनेस पावरफुल होता है आपका ऑन्टरप्राइज आपका फिजिबिलिटी एनालिसिस पॉजिटिव आएगा इस चीजों से ठीक है देन कम्स योर रिसोर्स सफिशियंसी रिसोर्स बहुत सारी हैं जैसे कि स्किल्स हैं आपकी एक्सपर्टीज नो हाउ नॉलेज ये भी रिसोर्स हैं फिर आपके आपको ये भी रिसोर्स अपनी ऑर्गेनाइजेशन में देखना है द फिजिकल थिंग्स इक्विपमेंट इट कुड बी द ऑफिस स्पेस आप कोई चीज बना रहे हैं तो उसके लिए मैनेज मैनुफैक्चरिंग स्पेस चाहिए आपको आपको रिसोर्स um, चाहिए कि क्या आपके पास किसी लीगल लॉयर या किसी का कॉन्टैक्ट uh, है आप उनके साथ कोऑर्डिनेट uh, कर सकते हैं बिकॉज यू नीड सम हेल्प इन रजिस्ट्रेशन प्रोसेस देन वन मोर इम्पॉर्टेंट थिंग इन फैक्ट द मोस्ट इम्पॉर्टेंट थिंग इन रिसोर्स सफिशेंसी इज नोइंग अबाउट योर पार्टनर बिकॉज यूजली या तो आप सोल प्रोप्राइटर पे जाएंगे या फिर आप पार्टनरशिप्स पे जाएंगे so if you know about the personality of your partner you should have some common goals your pers- his personality should be matching with your uh, common goals and aspirations that will actually help you out resources kyu important hai because ho sakta hai aap apna business khud start kar rahe ho apne paiso se kitni aapke paas um, amount hai aap kitni aapko zarurat hai wo hum next usme dekhenge lekin abhi hum dekh rahe hain ki aapke paas kitna amount hai capital kya aapke paas khud ke paas hai or you will be obtaining the capital from anywhere else so what are the financial resources now we say kahan se aayenge do you have any sources to find that capital resources kaun sponsor karega who will actually give you that money are you going to borrow it from someone so that is a credit or you are actually uh, obtaining it from your friends or relatives kis tarah se aap usko karenge and then uh, aapko employees kaise milenge now these are the non financial resources financial capital wala kahan se aayega non financial mein aapke employees se leke aapke space building space and everything included hai one important thing i do not want to miss is about the intellectual property aksar aisa hota hai ki aap log business start karte hain aur wo aksar business koi aur ले जाता है और सम एल्स स्टार्ट्स द बिजनेस सिमिलर बिजनेस सो दैट इज समाइम्स अ प्रॉब्लम फॉर अस सो मेक श्योर दैट यू हैव एक्सेस टू इंटेलेक्चुअल प्रॉपर्टी सो दैट यू कैन गेट प्रॉपर पेटेंट्स एंड कॉपी राइट्स ऑफ योर बिजनेस बिफोर एनीवन टेकिंग योर आइडिया स्नैचिंग इट 
Last one, financial feasibility analysis. I know it's getting prolonged, but I'm sorry, I can't help it out. I really want to explain it very well to my students. So, but I will just cover it up very quick. Financial feasibility, it is a process, you say, uh, which can evaluate the financial feasibility or the capital investment. And it is very crucial always for business before they start up. आपको चेक करना है कि आपके पास पैसा कितना है इन इन सिंपल टर्म्स और अगर पैसा है तो कितना है आपको एक्चुअली टोटल स्टार्टअप के लिए कितना पैसा जरूरी है और इट इज एक्चुअली नॉट अ डिटेल्ड फाइनेंशियल फोरकास्ट कि मैं कितना पैसा बनाऊंगा कितने टाइम में एक डिटेल्ड फोरकास्ट नहीं है विच इंक्लूड द बैलेंस शीट एंड एवरी थिंग इट्स एक्चुअली एन ओवर ठीक है लेकिन बिल्कुल इट्स नॉट अ वेरी brief overview but it's not very detailed as well right why do not we we do not need a detailed financial forecast because uh, business is actually evolve their costs also evolve so that's why aap bilkul exact forecast nahi bana sakte right it's not essential so we need four different things total startup cash ya kya likha startup cash needed yes the total startup cash is the let's say capital purchases operating expenses this is start karne ke liye jo building leni hai ya rent karni hai us pe kitna kharcha aayega operating expenses kitne honge employees ko kitne aap salaries denge and equipments and other stuff so remember that who will be your uh, from where will you get the money the sponsors you have to write it down very clearly and if you are loaning the money from banks borrowing it how will you return to them uh, who will be the investor again sponsorship ki baat hogi to investor kon hai unka ratio kya hoga how mu- how much what will, what will be the um, profit and loss ratio between you and your investor how will you divide the profits and how will you make the repayments to the credit agar aapne bank se loan liya hai so these all things are involved in total startup cash needed then comes uh, also you want to have to have a look into the initial cost which is involved in the business and you should be very much clear that within what time frame you can actually recover your startup cost right i'll be sharing score with you s c o r e students and uh, through your google through the google classroom and it is in an online worksheet to determine the startup costs so when you are coming up with this feasibility plan i'm sharing the tool with you aapko is pe bhi kaam karna hai this is part of your assignment again then you have to see that uh, financial performance of similar business you have to see that uh, their financial reports usually these financial reports uh, of small businesses are not available uh, in a published uh, form but you actually have to delve into it find your contacts in your networks and take suggestions from similar small and medium enterprises similar to your business and see that uh, what was their financial progress how do they how did they start up how did they make money how much time did it take and uh, what type of models capital investment models were very uh, feasible to them maybe there were some business angels who invested and you have to check again similar business performance can be checked through business statistics maybe it's usually it's available sometimes it's available in uh, some websites uh, you have to check the rate of uh, returns uh, rois you have to check the balance sheet if they are published so that you can know about it overall i'll say that this financial feasibility analysis um you can conduct it by observing observing and performing some leg work ja ke business pe dekhna aur dekhna kyunki ab dekhe let's say you are starting a restaurant or you do not know that how much will you earn or what is the financial part you do not know about much about it what you can do go to different restaurants visit see and observe that how many customers are coming every day what is the uh, customer um, uh, frequency and then once you know about the frequency of visit see that what are the prices of food different restaurants are offering and then you see that 
what is the average sale of a particular shop and then you see that what is the average purchase of that shop customer aa to raha hai restaurant mein kya frequency se wo purchases kar raha hai kya cheeze le raha hai aur kitne mein le raha hai the prices you can just gauge the prices measure them this way ek dusra tarika observation ka ye hai if you do not find the financial um reports or any such thing moving ahead assignment so this is the last slide you guys you have to prepare your business feasibility plan all the details the tools and templates about the score the first screen and everything is going to be shared with you on google classroom the assigned time for the assignment the deadline is also given there and uh, make sure that you submit your assignment on time i hope you all understand all the pro the points which have been explained here and uh, if you have any query you can write to me uh, either through my email that is sadia khurram at life.com s a d i a k h u w r a m or my students can contact me through my through the google classroom i'm available or even through whatsapp take care see you uh, in the next lecture the next week thank you